Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce. I'm so glad to be with you today. I'm in the book of I mean, actually the letter, the epistle of 1 Corinthians. Been talking about the wisdom of God, the difference between the wisdom of this world and the natural thinking uh, uh, and the mind of Christ. I mean, there's two, the Bible makes a distinction. It does in Proverbs a lot. You know, it talks about the the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. So there's a lot to understand and know about God's wisdom. And um, the last verse we just read in 1 Corinthians, just in the first chapter, verse 24, it says, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. So I always say that um, we have Christ in our heart. That's the power of God. We live by his life. Actually, he's our new power source in us. We don't live from our own sufficiencies. If you think you're living from your own sufficiencies, then you're going to go try keep a whole bunch of laws because you, you think you ought to and should. And, and not that we're law breakers, we're law keepers because we've got the keeper within, and that's Christ. He's the one that who's, who has fulfilled the whole law, and he lives within us. And he's the power of our life. He's the power of the Spirit. And the gifts flow out of the power of God. And, but the Corinthians were very interesting and pretty much like we are today in the body of Christ. Pretty much, um, even if we do understand the gifts of the Spirit and God has gifted us and He doesn't want to take His gift back, He loves it. But if it's not done in wisdom, it's not going to be done in love. And, it, and we saw last time that it probably is going to be full of pride and you're going to be pretty puffed up for what you know, and I can attest to that myself, that coming along in my, uh, when I began my Christian walk, I started reading the Bible, and the Spirit would give me understanding, and I would just, I got so puffed up, like, wow, nobody knows it like me. Well, (laughs) I think we can all get overly impressed with our gifts, and I think we have to back off all that, because that is not the wisdom of God. That's, That's immaturity. And actually, 1 Corinthians says this. Paul says um, that um, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, he's saying. And hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able to bear it, even after six years. So he, when he first went there, he led them to Christ, and they were idol worshipers. Um, I mean, Corinth is... Um, is west of Athens, so probably they were pretty philosophical as well. And they were Greeks, of course. So, um, but he he couldn't really give them meat of the Spirit, even though they had a lot of worldly wisdom. He couldn't give them anything very deep. The deep things of God is what he's saying. For you are yet carnal. In other words, you're still operating from your flesh. You're not, you don't know that you are spirit and Christ is joined to you in spirit and that's who you are living. See, we're a spirit joined to Christ, a little spirit. We have a human spirit, a little spirit. His spirit is joined to my spirit. So I have a little human spirit, but it is joined to Christ and that's, and so therefore I am a spirit being but I am wrapped in soul and body, and that's my fleshly air, um, part of me. Now, that, um, that's not evil. It's not good either. But if I live as just a soulish person with soulish understanding, and you see, then in my life, God had to take me to a very dark place, and I got pretty um, depressed because basically I was living my life as a soul person just from my feelings and my thoughts, and that ruled me, even though I did know the Holy Spirit. So he's saying I'm still carnal until I really am operating from the wisdom of God, which is a Christ on mine. So he says, 
And you are yet carnal, for whereas the things among you, there are still envying and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as mere men? You don't walk as spirit men. You walk like the world walks, is what he's saying. So there's still divisions and carnality and a strife and vain glorying, people glorying over their gifts and taking credit for everything that really, they'll say, oh yeah, the, the, this is the gift of the Spirit, but they're pretty proud of their gifts, you see. That's, that's what he's coming against here. And um, so let me start. So Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God, and I love that. The twofold, twofold um, new creation inside of us is both power and wisdom. I love that. But the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I ask myself, what in the world is the weakness of God? Well, I think Christ on the cross is the weakest God has ever been, because he certainly was God. He was certainly man, but he was God, and that the weakness of God is stronger than men because it really saved us. His, the weakest he got, which was at his crucifixion, was uh, the wisest and the strongest thing that God to do and cert could do for us and certainly much wiser than any man would do. There's not another person that I know that would go to the cross for me. You know, I mean, they would call that foolishness. Why would I die for you, you see? And then verse 26 says, For we, for you see your calling, brethren, how there are not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, nor many noble are called. But God has cho chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. The base things of the world and the things that are despised hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not to bring to naught things that are. So he, Paul himself was certainly pretty noble. He was taught in the grandest way, being a Pharisee. And, uh, but he says in Galatians, and I've always loved this in Galatians, I love it when Paul says, For neither um, I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which, I, which was preached to me um, did not come from man. And I always think, during his lifetime before he was a saved, before he was saved, Paul learned everything from his schooling, from, his, uh, from men teaching him. And he said, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I love that because that's really how I know what I, what I know. It's by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, you know, I'm not saying that I didn't go to classes and I didn't sit under people. I did. And I did learn a lot. I'm not saying that we should not do those things. But hear from the Holy Spirit and don't get so enamored with the teachers and the preachers that you think, you know, that you almost make them infallible. Oh, everybody is fallible. None of us are infallible except for Jesus himself. So um, it's not people that we trust. We trust the Holy Spirit. Inside of you is the spirit of truth and he will lead you into all truths, I promise. He promises. Jesus promised that. That's part of the covenant. That's part of the new covenant, the new promises given to you, that he will lead you into all truth. But you have to submit yourself to him and say, Lord, I'm willing and, and I'm asking you to, you know, uh, reveal this to me and reveal that to me. And he will. I mean, he, it, he wants to. And he does. He certainly does, but it comes by revelation and not just by some information. I think a lot of schooling is just informational. If it's not revelational, you know, maybe you better go to another school. <laughs> okay. For, um, and it says, because God has not chosen many noble people, even Paul himself. I mean, he was the, he was the one that uh, he called himself the least of all of the apostles. And um, the other apostles, if you think about them, they were just mere fishermen and, you know, just kind of like me. They weren't really schooled in all the things of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit taught them everything. So, um, and they, they certainly walked with Jesus. Well, 
that's a wonderful. I'm advocating that way. That's a wonderful way to learn. Uh, walk with Jesus and let and believe that the Holy Spirit is in you, and believe that the Spirit of Truth will lead you into all truth. And I don't think you can, you can't go wrong. He he can't he's he can't lie. So the devil will lie to you, and but. Uh, God will never lie to you, but I mean, it might, he might take you through some hard times to teach you what he wants to teach you because even Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. So you'll be going through some things, but, but there's a lesson in every single solitary thing that you're going through. And I've written a book called the treasures of darkness. I always say in every dark place that any of us ever go through, that God is greater and God has a treasure for you. He's got a present for you in that dark place. Look for it, ask for it, expect it, because it is there. Uh, the treasures of darkness, hidden riches in secret places. Mm, that's, that's great. I love the, though that's Isaiah 45, 3. I want you to look that verse up and you will see what I'm talking about. Write me and I'll send you one of my books. Um, so this says that God is not chosen... Um, He's chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. I mean, it was foolish that the king of the universe would be born in a stable in Bethlehem, in, in like a cave. It's foolish that the first people that were informed of his coming were just mere shepherds watching over their sheep. Why wouldn't you put a king in a palace? Why wouldn't you have him born in the grandest of places? But no, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. This is wisdom. But you see, you have to be humble enough to receive it. Uh, I mean, was it foolishness that he took a 14-year-old girl, Mary, a spouse to Joseph, and impregnated her with the Holy Spirit? Oh, my goodness. What? What a story we, we have to tell. And it's not a story, really. It's, it really happened. She was only 14, 15 years old, and there she is pregnant and not married and still a virgin. My goodness. What, the wisdom of God is in that? Yes. The wisdom of God is in that because he's going to bring forth his son out of a, from a virgin. My goodness. Born in a stable. And a star would show the way for the wise men to come. And they would be foolish enough even though they were called wise men, why would they follow after a star? You see, because they just wanted God. They believed God. You see, when you believe God, you're going to be humbled because nobody is going to believe your report. How in the world? I can remember when I first found Christ. And at that time, my mom and dad were not saved. Actually, I led them to Christ. Um, I went to my mother's and dad's house and I said, I found Jesus. And he has set me free. He has forgiven me of all my sins. And he's my savior. And I'm going to heaven. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. And my mother looked at me like, who do you think you are to say you're going to heaven? I said, well, I know it does seem crazy, but, but I've just taken it by faith. And God has given me a witness in my heart that I have him. I have the Holy Spirit. I know I know the Lord. And I said, but mom, you and dad, you're not going to heaven. You don't have Christ. You're going to hell. Wow. I mean, how often do you say that to people, especially to your mom and dad? Well, I want you to know, if, you've ever, if I've ever seen anger, my mother was a, a very angry woman I, when she raised me. She was angry all the time. I always said she was like a volcano waiting to erupt every second over just anything. She was that angry. Boy, did she erupt that day, threw me out of the house too. And, um, and I thought on my way home, and I thought, well, Lord, you know, I'm just going to give this to you. I, I just, I feel like I just gave your words, you know, and, and the Lord started teaching me right away that he indwelt me and he spoke through me. So I just lay, left it up to him. Well, for three days, my mother was under conviction. She called her sisters. How can, can you even believe what she said? She said that I'm going to hell. How can she say such a thing? I'm a good person. I, I'd go to church. Well, we went occasionally, you know. 
um, I do good things occasionally, you know, and I can't believe, and she was in self-justification. That's the first thing when you're under conviction you want to do is self-justify. But after three days, she, she was ironing at her ironing board. I love this story. I love it. It's in my book. If you want my book, I said, write for me. I'll send it to you for nothing. Just write me. If you want to donate, great. I, I, that's wonderful. But I don't even ask. You know, you, you just give what you can. You know, if you don't have anything, you write me. I will send it to you free. I write this in my book. She fell to her ironing board. Why? Because the presence of God filled her little room where she was ironing. And the Holy Spirit said to her, Leona, she's right. Your daughter's right. If you don't have me, you're already in hell. And you're certainly going to go there. She fell to her knees and she received Jesus Christ. She came out of her basement. She came up the steps. She got on the phone. She said, Sylvia, Sylvia, you were right. I have Jesus. He, I have him now. I have him. I said, oh, Mom. Of course, we cried together. We became best friends. We were like worst enemies as I was growing up. I thought, how did I get a mother like this? You know, just everything I did was wrong. Everything I did, little did I know it was from her own condemnation that she projected all that onto me. And thank you, Jesus, that we found Christ. My mom now, she's she went to be with the Lord in the early 80s. And um, she, I call her the queen of heaven now, I'm telling you. she was She was something else. Get my book and you're going to see all these wonderful, magnificent stories that I write about in my book and tell about her. But not many wise are called. She certainly wasn't that wise. And I'm not either. I don't pretend to be. But God loves the base things of this world. I'm just a common housewife. I don't pretend to be some great Bible student, although the Holy Spirit gives me all kinds of wisdom in the Bible. And I think anybody can have it. I, I love really the way I am, and I'll tell you why. Because I think then that tells everybody if, hey, if God can give her all this wisdom, he can give me wisdom too. I'm going to just take it by faith. You see, that's, that's why I love it. So he does call the base things. Now, Paul was certainly not a base person, certainly well-educated, but he declares it wasn't from man that I really learned the truth. It was from the Holy Spirit is where I really got the truth and could teach his gospel. He, he, he often said, you know, this is my gospel. He's right. The other apostles didn't know it at first. I'm sure, you know, after 70 AD and after Jerusalem was destroyed and they were dispersed out everywhere, uh, they learned it real quick. So they couldn't depend on all of the old legalistic, you know, feast days and you know, the um, laws that they had being Jews the, and, and the things that they could eat and what they couldn't eat because there was still, and the fact that they had needed to be circumcised and all that, there was still some kind of partiality. They were partial in their understanding and they were trying to put Judaism and Christianity in the same box and it doesn't belong in the same body. It will not belong. So that was really God's mercy that he destroyed uh, Jerusalem in 78 AD and dispersed them out. So I'm sure they got the same wisdom that Paul did. Actually, Paul in Galatians, you know, confronts Peter right in front of everybody in Antioch because Peter was being hypocritical. You know, we just read last time that the mind of the flesh is hypocritical. Soon as he was there eating with the Gentiles, which, you know, and preaching, you know, now that we're Christians, we can eat, uh, we're free to eat. Don't call unclean what God calls clean. So he was saying that to the Christians. And as soon as he heard that the, his brethren, the Jews from Jerusalem, were coming down to Antioch, he gets up and absolutely confuses the first Christians there. Why? He's a hypocrite. He's hypocritical, you see, because he did not know he doesn't live any longer. Christ lives in him. And he was still trying to live from his own wisdom. So that's why Paul had to confront him there in Galatians. So the Bible, and I love this in verse 28 of chapter 1. We're about ready to get through chapter 1. My goodness, praise the Lord. God has uh, chosen the base things of the world, the things which are despised has he chosen. Yea, things that are not, to bring to naught things that are. 
You know, recently I saw on TV this uh, boy with no arms and more, no legs. I don't know his name, but you probably know him. Bless him. He is out preaching the gospel. I'm telling you, if he does not bring people to his knees, nobody will. Okay, God takes the things that are despised, and he uses them in a mighty, mighty way to bring the people that think they have something to bring them to nothing so that they can really know the truth. And then it says that no flesh shall glory in his presence. See, we're all, we're all full of our own glory and all full of what we can do and how we can minister and all the gifts of the Spirit and which ones we have and the other ones don't have the better, better ones and all that hypocritical partiality that dividing Christianity the way it does, you see. And the truth is no flesh will ever glory before God, but of him... Are ye in Christ Jesus? Now, this is one of my favorite verses. All right. Since, and if you are a Christian, I'm not going to say everybody that's listening to me is because I don't know. But if you are a Christian, you can say, since I am a Christian, then I can, I'll take, I'm going to take this verse for my own. Listen to it. But of him are you in Christ Jesus. That means in union with Christ. But of him are you in union with Christ. If you're a Christian, you're in union with Christ Jesus. You're not independently just yourself. You're in union with Christ, who of God is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Listen to this. When you walk in and know that in union with Christ, this is the real truth about you. If you're in Christ, you're in union with him, and he is made unto you wisdom. So, so where does my wisdom come from? He is made unto me wisdom. Wis it's part of the new creation within us. It's a part of Christ, the life of Christ within us. The life of Christ has a new mind, has a new power source. The, the new life within me, it's not my life. It's an, a life of another in me. The Holy Spirit is the life of another inside me because I'm, I'm the simple vessel of that life. And, and that life, and as long as we walk in union with Christ and derive our righteousness from him, then you can declare you are righteous. You're not righteous by virtue of your own righteousness. That's self-righteousness. You're righteous because you're deriving your righteousness for him, from him because you're in union with him. Okay, if, then what about wisdom? Well, Christ is made unto you wisdom. You can declare, oh, I already have the wisdom of God. So last time when I told you about me thinking I was losing my mind because I was so confused and so bombarded with satanic thoughts that I said to the Lord, I'm losing my mind. And the Lord said back to me, good, Sylvia. Now you can know you have my mind. Well, I didn't really realize that we're, see, it's being revealed in us as we walk in the Spirit. So all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I have His mind. I can count on that. I can put my faith in the fact that Christ has made unto me wisdom. So when I'm confused about this or that, ah, oh, I can say, Christ, thank you. You have the wisdom in this situation. You know the answer. I'm trusting that. And He will bring it in you. He will... See, the wi wisdom comes through your mind. It doesn't come from your mind. It comes th goes through. See, God is using your mind to think through. Wow. Because it's a mind of Christ coming through your natural mind with his wisdom. Wow. But don't be confused and don't think that, that you, you thought that up. You didn't think that up. That came from God. Most of the time, I think there's no way I could have thought that one up. And... And, I, and, and see myself in union with Christ. Therefore, I can derive not only wisdom, but he has made unto me wisdom, made up to me righteousness. So my righteousness is not my righteousness, it's his righteousness within me. So therefore, I can declare I am righteous. And sanctification. You see, Christ is made unto me sanctification. Sanctification is by faith too. All of this is by faith. You take it by faith that he lives in you. By faith, he is my wisdom. By faith, he is my righteousness. By faith, he is my sanctification. So actually, sanctification, righteousness, 
and wisdom is really a person. It's Christ who is that inside you and manifest it as you, as you take it by faith, you see. And he is my redemption. He is the whole, he is the redeemer within me, you see, redeeming everything. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. So if I, if I want to glory about anything, if, sometimes, you know, things come out of me and I go, wow, wow, how did I think of that? Well, I really know it comes from the Lord. And I give him the credit and I say, wow, thank you, Jesus. How would I even know that? So I'm not glorying in myself. If all of a sudden I thought it all is coming from me, and that, that's what's going on when you're not really in the mind of Christ. You think it's all coming from you. So you say, oh yeah, it was Jesus, but basically you're taking all the credit. You're loving it too much. You're getting too impressed with yourself too much. It's not about you. We've got to get over ourselves. I said that at the end of the last program, and let me say it again. We've got to get over ourselves. It's not about us. It's about Christ being inside of us, living his life as power and wisdom through us. So write me. Let me know what you think about all this. And let me hear from you because it encourages me. And occasionally I need encouraging from the outside. I get all kinds of comfort and encouragement and peace and joy, long-suffering and uh, wisdom and everything from the Holy Spirit within but occasionally it would be really nice if you would write me and tell me that this program has blessed you. And if you have ears to hear, you'll hear what I'm saying. If you don't have ears to hear, maybe you need to be born again of God's Spirit. Maybe you're not even born again. So uh, Jesus said that, and I think I can say that too, because what I'm saying is not from me. It's from the Holy Spirit of God. So I thank God for you, and I thank God for the spirit that indwells in you who will teach you all things. And I give God all the glory, all the praise. And, um, and I thank him for you. And for all of my listeners, I thank you. And, uh, and like I said, please write me and I will, talk, I will see you next time. So thank you. Bye-bye.